Now it's time for this week weekly college wager. Yeah, so, baby. Yeah, go. baby. Money on my yeah, mind. Baby. Money is all I think of. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this week we got Miami with the big win in Miami, Ohio. So we're going with Miami versus Texas a and which is going to be a much closer game this week. Ooh, in Miami. That's going to be a great game. The at the Hard Rock. Favor, at Rose. the Hard Rock. Right. So the spread is at four and a half for Texas. Man, it's going to be a good game, bro. Miami right now, they're, they're running with the dual running attack. They got Henry Parrish and Mark Fletcher Jr., they was taking on the charge or whatever last week. Tyler Van Dyke didn't do too much, but he did. Uh, he was pretty accurate, 17 to 22, one touchdown, one interception. But I think, man, these guys or whatever going up against Texas. Texas is number 22 right now. They got uh, Connor Wegman. He threw for five touchdowns last week against New Mexico, and he hasn't thrown an interception since he's been in college football. So, wow. Yeah, so he yeah he, he's tight. He he only play, started a couple games, whatever last year. So he's like thirteen touchdowns, zero interceptions. Texas A and M like that running game, bro. They like that running game. They they got to find somebody to, to to get with them or whatever, and, and get going or whatever with that running game. So that's why I'm kind of pushing towards Miami on this one, man. Miami defense is looking a lot better this year, man, than previous years. Texas A and M. Like I say, they got the quarterback, but man, Miami's their rushing defense, man, they're gonna kill that stuff, man. It's gonna it's gonna be one dimensional game, mostly passing, bro. Cause like I say, the running the running game is gonna be non existent, man. So I'm going with Miami, man, to, to win this game, bro. Yeah, you taking them flat out to win? I'm taking them to win the game. In Miami, yeah, them boys hype right now. So you're taking Miami to cover the spread and win that game. Right. Ooh, that's bold. Mm-hmm. Miami and Miami, man, those boys turned up right now, bro, for real. The running game, man, going to be killer. I'll tell you what I like. I think the over and uh, over under in that game is 51. I like the mm-hmm. over in that. Like I the like over? the over. I think the over. Yes, bro. I think these both of these teams are going to score. Like you said, pass happy. I just I think it's going to have to. Miami was doing good running the ball, but if a and gets up on them, they're going to have to pass it. So I like the over in 51 points, man. Mm-hmm. I, I do. And, and, and the crazy thing about it, uh, Texas a and you know, Jimbo Fisher, man, you know, he lost a lot of games last year, man. I was going to call him out on the hot seat or whatever, but, man, he getting paid too much bread. But he going to have to get his stuff together early. And then he got a six-year senior, David Bailey, bro, like six-year senior at running back. So that's your top guy. So, bro, this man like 24, man, you grown out here, bro. You got to <laughs> – you got to get you some some younger, nicer running back. So hey, David, man, Bailey, David Bailey not going to cut it for those guys. He's working on his master's degree, man. Yeah, clearly. Come on now. But now he, he needs – Jimbo Fisher needs to be criticized too because you got the top recruiting class, what, like a year ago, and you've done nothing mm-hmm. with it. It's time that you start making some noise and do this. So, all right. Got yeah. the Hurricanes covering that spread, I feel you. Game I got coming into this week, and we talked about them a little bit. Uh, in the segment earlier, but Colorado, you got Nebraska at Colorado, mm-hmm. newly ranked Colorado. I think they're 22nd, 23rd Ooh, now. That week one nice, got them in the rankings. Nice, yep, nice. but Nebraska comes to Boulder, faces Colorado. Right now, Colorado's favored by three points. Nebraska lost to Minnesota their first game in a close game. They probably should have won, but they dropped the ball and they lost. Bro, uh, you know that, and, and you know it was uh before they beat TCU. They had Nebraska over uh eight points. Yeah, and they were. Yeah, they were, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It, it, that's, that's crazy. How, that's how it works. That's one flip, win, one flip loss. Flops. Flip flops, yeah, right. the, flips the money line because mm-hmm. nobody expected to see that. But Nebraska lost to Minnesota week one. Colorado beat TCU week one. We talked about that earlier. Nebraska quarterback Jeff Sims, he runs the entire offense through him. He runs it, throws it, all that. Everything revolves around Jeff Sims for Nebraska's okay. offense. Okay. He led the team in week one with 19 carries for 91 yards. Passing, he was 11-19, 114 yards, one touchdown, three picks. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, Sims' accuracy in his decision-making is a major pause for concern. He reminds me a lot of Denard Robinson when he was back at Michigan. You know, had all the jets, the burners, you know, just inaccurate throwing the ball sometimes, yeah. decision-making questionable. It's like, I don't know, man. But it, I could just definitely see – 
a lot, a lot of comparisons there, especially how they're running the offense too. I, I would just like to say no, Denard was probably more explosive as a runner, but Jeff Sims can run though. He, this guy's athletic. He can ball out. But anyways, he threw three interceptions in Nebraska, uh, lost a fumble. The running back did, and they turned it over four times. And that's something they got to improve on moving on. Right. They got to improve on that shit. You cannot turn the ball over four times and expect to beat any team. Okay. Especially a, a division opponent. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, Nebraska's defense did good though. Sustaining the run. Um, they allowed only 55 yards, but Colorado's run game is not the threat here. Mm -hmm. They don't run the ball like that. Right. They throw, they're going to throw, throw, throw on your ass. On the flip side, you got Colorado's defense. Their defense is vulnerable to the run. Mm -hmm. Nebraska runs the ball very well. Very well. Colorado does not defend the run very well. Mm -hmm. So what Colorado has to do is jump on these boys and make Nebraska have to spread it out and make him have to throw the ball. Right. That's kind of where I'm leaning right now. I don't think Nebraska was as bad as they showed up to be last week. Matt Rule's first game as a head coach. They're going to get better. Get your turnovers. And check here, man. You can't be turning the ball over that many times and expect to win these big games. Well, I just, I think Colorado is on a high right now, man. I do, mm -hmm. despite their defense not going to be able to stop, uh, going to be able to stop Jeff Sims in the run game potentially. I do have faith in Colorado's offense and Shador Sanders and all them boys making the plays to put up the points. So stopping the run isn't going to be the thing that makes or breaks them. I like Colorado in this game, bro. And three-point spread at home, coming home off of the high horse. Maybe I'm riding I'm – I'm, maybe I'm buying into it a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. But right now, from what I've seen, I watched both those games. I watched Nebraska versus Minnesota last week, and I watched Colorado versus TCU. And watching both of those games, even though you can't compare everything on a week-to-week -week basis, that's just basically what you do when you assess for gambling. So a three-point spread, I'll definitely take Colorado with that. Give me Colorado to cover the three points. They win this game. What's the uh, over-under on that one? Over-under on that is 60. Oh, I'm definitely going to under on that. I'm gonna definitely going go under on under. that? Yeah, I'm going to definitely go to under on that one. Uh, I feel like Colorado will score some points, but when Nebraska played Minnesota's defense, I thought that was going to be a high-scoring game, but – like I said, they, they shut all that stuff down, bro. And Minnesota is a high-scoring team as well. They, they was one of the top scorers, whatever, in the Big Ten last year. So it's different, man. It's different now. I feel like Got that defense. Different guys in there. Right. That defense from Nebraska is going to have to show up and show out, bro. And I don't know if they can do that stuff or whatever. But I I, I don't even know if Colorado's going to win this game, bro. But I feel like the under. I feel like I, I'm just going to take the under on this one. I want Colorado to win, but I don't want to jinx them. So I'm going to go to under. We see with caution, though, because Shador Sanders can score 40 or 50 by himself. That man lit their ass up last week. And our right. final game for college football, weekly wager this week, number 22 Ole Miss at number 24 Tulane. Right now, Ole Miss is favored by seven points. Ole Miss is coming off uh, a win where they beat the shit out of a school named Mercer, 73 to 7. And Tulane just beat South Alabama 31 to 17. Breaking it down like this, this is the game of the year for Tulane, who have a lot of returning players from last season with a good opportunity to have a great season and win in the AAC. Tulane plays nobody else the rest of the year. This is their biggest game of the season. Right. Um, they got a good quarterback and Michael Pratt. He went 14 to 15, 294 yards. Four touchdowns for South Alabama. They got a good receiver and Jaquan Jackson, three receptions, 106 yards, two touchdowns. That's mad numbers. It ain't going to be that easy right. mm -hmm. versus an SEC team with better competition, okay? Mm -hmm. Ole Miss devoured Mercer in week one, 73-7, to seven, dude. Mm -hmm. Their quarterback, Jackson Dart, 18-23, 334 yards, four touchdowns. Wide receiver, Trey Harris, six catches, 133 yards, four touchdowns. They had 524 passing yards in week one, which is different than what we've seen last year from Ole Miss because you remember they did a lot of running last year. They have a stellar Quinshawn. running back and sophomore, yeah. Quinshawn Jenkins, our Jenkins. boy. We talked mm -hmm. about him plenty of times on the show. Star in the making, bro, star in the making. But he only had 13 carries for 60 yards, but he had two touchdowns. But mm -hmm. I think they got to get more run-oriented as these games progress. 
in the right. season. The schedule gets no easier for Ole Miss from here on out, dude. They got Bama in two weeks, which they play at Bama. They got LSU the week after. Then that's followed up by Arkansas and Auburn in back-to-back weeks. And then they have Texas A&M two weeks later and Georgia the week after that, bro. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> this, game, this game for versus Tulane – is right. an absolute must win if you're right. Ole Miss, bro, and Lane Kiffin, okay? This is a must win. Don't get me wrong. You cannot afford to lose this game and be seriously talked about at all with this hellacious schedule you got coming up with these teams I just named, bro. You have to win this game. I think they will win this game. i like them to cover the seven points because Tulane is a good team, and there's a good chance that Tulane will go 11-1 and one this year. Mm-hmm. With this being their only loss, bro. Right. You messing with that? You messing with an SEC team, dude? This is a whole new monster, man. I'm not throwing shade on Tulane. They're a good team. Like I said, they will probably win the AAC this year. Right. But that's that league. SEC this is this something is else, dogs. right? This is Real. a complete new game over here, bro. I gotta go with Ole Miss to win this and cover the seven point spread. I like that. Uh, Tulane got Willie Fritz over that twelve and two last year, man. That man bought that for real. They got a uh Tulane got a pretty decent defense, man. It, it's okay. They can rush. They can rush pretty good on the line. Uh, Michael Pratt, he gonna have to play his heart out, bro. Like, he gonna have to do everything possible or whatever to even try to even stay involved in this game. Old Miss is hungry, man. I think it's gonna be a shootout, bro. I think it's gonna be a nice little shootout, probably for like two and a half quarters, and then Old Miss just gonna pull it. You know, just pull it. Pull away. Push out. Yeah, yeah. Quinshawn Junkins, man. That man is a monster, bro, for real. And y'all can try to slow him down, bro, but <laughs> it's no way, bro. When that man gets going, man, it is over with, man. You can cancel Christmas. So I'm definitely going with Ole Miss to cover the spread as well. There you have it. Week two, college football wagers, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, subscribe for weekly wagers from the Let Loose Podcast. Big bits. No whammies.